Warzone has now seen three different iterations across a four year time span, and I would argue each has their own pros and cons. However, amongst the three, one stands out as the worst, the one universally hated by players, the middle child of the bunch, if you will. I'm of course talking about Warzone 2. Today, we're going to take a dive into why Warzone 2 is hated by many, despite toying with a lot of fun concepts and implementing elements to Warzone that we still have today. I'm going to break this video down into eight categories, and we're going to take a look at what was bad or good about each one. First and foremost, you have the movement. This is probably the biggest change to the overall gameplay that most people were pissed about. It's one thing to not have slide canceling, but for a minute there, you couldn't even run while plating up. Pair that with an extremely fast time to kill, and there's a ton of situations where you just can't do anything about surviving. Seriously, if you had one bad circle pull, even if you were playing against an absolute brick, you could not do anything about it. On the plus side, we had the option of dolphin diving and back to the game, which I actually see as a huge plus. Aside from getting you behind cover in a pinch, it was discovered that dolphin diving off of a roof and immediately pulling your chute would give you extra height that enabled jumps you normally couldn't make. Abusing this in a map like Vondel was extremely satisfying and became a core mechanic for me that I still use in Warzone 3. I think what they were trying to do with the movement change in Warzone 2 was not allow TikTok sweats to outplay you in near every engagement, which is kind of dumb because if they're better than you in the first place, shouldn't they be able to outplay you? I don't know, it seemed kind of like a way to level the playing field, but it honestly really didn't do that. It made it more unbalanced in my opinion. Movement was a hell. <laughs> The maps in Warzone 2 are actually a major strong suit in the game in my opinion. Al Mazar is a pretty solid battle royale map. With 150 players in each lobby, the pacing to me felt really nice for a large scale map. Unfortunately, they decided to decrease the player count to 100, which ultimately ruined the entire flow of the map. I seriously have no idea why they decided to do that, but it still made for some fun scenarios, just made games like a lot more dull. It's bright and it's vibrant and filled with a ton of lovable POIs. I know a lot of people didn't really enjoy the super mountainous terrain, but I thought it was a lot of fun. It made for a really good time sniping. Then once Resurgence was introduced, we had Ashika Island, which is definitely the least favorite of the three, which might I add, I honestly don't know why. I actually really like this map. Other than being kind of like yucky and dark, I think the map itself functions perfectly as a Resurgence map. Maybe add like eight more to the player count to increase the pacing, but other than that, it's another win for Warzone 2. And lastly, there was Vondel, which has definitely become a fan favorite even today. I'm not even joking, I think Vondel could rival Rebirth Island and how popular it's become. Super close range in almost every encounter makes for a very fast-paced gameplay that the resurgence community loves also 72 people in each lobby enables high kill gameplay to the max 20 plus kill games have never been easier than on vondel all three maps result in a w for warzone 2. <laughs> Besides movement, this is another one of the biggest changes that they made from Warzone 1. The looting system is far superior than Warzone 1's for a lot of reasons. For starters, it let you personalize your gameplay the way you wanted to, kind of like how a battle royale should. Aside from your traditional lethal, tactical, ammo, field upgrade, self-revive, kill streak, armor, and gas map slots, you now had six additional slots in your inventory to stow extra any of anything I just said. This made for a lot of fun and allowed your squad to be absolutely kitted to the max. If you wanted six self-revives ready to go every time you went down, you could. If you wanted 12 smoke grenades to rotate across the entire map undetected, you could. If you want an inventory of rockets and go full troll mode, you could do that too. Obviously, I think this system should have been in Warzone 1, but it just makes the game feel way more strategic. You really had to like make sacrifices as to what you want in your inventory and what you didn't want. There was even a period of time where you could find a medium or large backpack that not only expanded your inventory slots, but also allowed for a third gun. This was seriously such an awesome feature. I loved this so much. I wish they would bring it back. Running like your AR, your SMG, and then having a sniper was just like so much fun. But they removed that after season one. I'm also going to go ahead and mention that on launch, the looting was a little bit different. It was honestly pretty despised because you had to look in each player's like backpack and kind of like manually sort through the inventory, kind of like a diet PUBG versus obviously what we know and love where just everything spills out on the ground. You can see what you need on the fly. You don't really have to like sort through anything. It was really frustrating because you would search through someone's bag only for them to have nothing that you wanted. So you're just wasting time searching through things versus when it's on the ground you know exactly what you want and you can just pick it up and be on your way we'll go ahead and mention armor satchels which are also present in this state of the game as well basically you had to find an armor satchel then that would like enable you to have three plates of armor because by default you can only put it in two which was honestly super dumb granted the spawn rate was like pretty abundant but sometimes it, you just wouldn't find one and you were stuck with just two armor plates the entire game but luckily all those features i just mentioned were taken out after season one looting absolute w
Now the gunplay, this is another change that I do think was for worse. Adding visual recoil to the game sucks. I honestly can't explain the science behind visual recoil, but this just makes hitting your shots so much more difficult than ever. And the people most affected by it are the mouse and keyboard players, aka me, which was just a massive kick in the balls. The only saving grace was a much quicker TTK that made things a little more forgiving, but still much more difficult than Warzone 1. I'll briefly go ahead and mention the metas, which I think were like some of the best Warzone has ever seen, like the Cronin Squall, RPK, Hemlock AR, and Lockman 556 were all of a lot of fun. Yeah, so in the middle of recording this, I completely forgot that reload canceling wasn't in the game, and that was also just another terrible thing about this game. It left you in a lot of like situations where once you started reloading, you were just committed to it, and if someone pulled up on you while you're reloading an LMG, well, you were just totally screwed. It was so annoying and disrupted the flow so bad. Let's go ahead and mention sniping right now, since this kind of like falls under the gunplay umbrella. We all know that for the longest time, snipers didn't one-shot in Warzone 2, and that was because they were extremely easy to use. You would throw a high-velocity ammo on it, and it was pretty much hit scan, which honestly even made two taps pretty easy. I was on the train of wanting a one-shot sniper, but not with the same velocity as the snipers I was using, but not even having an option for a one-shot sniper that would decrease the velocity was like super annoying. Obviously, I think like it was probably like a whole half year before they added like a one-shot sniper that was like not bugged. But visual recoil, bad. Sniping, bad. Metas, good. Overall, gunplay, bad. <laughs> Starting with the nuke contracts, this was seriously one of the coolest things that we've ever seen in Warzone. For those of you that don't know, I'm assuming most of you do, but I'll go ahead and explain it anyways. You had to win five games in a row with the same squad just to be able to attempt the contract, and obviously we all know that contract was extremely difficult. Basically, you had to assemble elements, which if you were carrying one, they each had their own negative effects, whether it be like mark you on the map or like slowly damage you or something like that. Then you had to assemble all the parts on a specific site, and then once you armed the bomb, you had to defend it, and there was always marked, and there was like just a bunch of people trying to attack you but if you were lucky enough to complete this contract it was like a huge accolade to have under your belt i stand by saying that this is like one of the toughest gaming accomplishments today i personally have never completed one but it definitely gave you something to grind for this seriously spawned like a whole like genre of streamer that would just strictly only grind nukes and kind of like carry people to nukes that was like their whole specialty which i thought was really cool then you have the black site which i know is not near as difficult as the nuke but it's kind of like a quest within the battle royale game as well. I'll go ahead and briefly mention how you do it as well, even though you probably know. Once you complete a stronghold, you get a key that unlocks the black site, which there's only one of on the map. After fighting AI, a juggernaut, and other squads going for it, you're gifted with a ton of exclusive loot that you can't get any other way. At launch, the AI was super annoying and redundant, but they eventually got it to a balanced state where it wasn't too, like, in your face. Nowadays, black sites are a random in-game event at the beginning of each match, which I wish was just present in every single match. It's nice that we have that option, but it's not guaranteed, so... Kind of annoying, but whatever. Overall, nuke contract and black sites, massive W. Believe it or not, Warzone 1 never had ranked, so this was the first iteration of ranked we would see in Warzone. Before I started dabbling in ranked, I didn't really see ranked as necessary because ranked in a battle royale sense kind of seems like scuff to me. But after playing it, it makes a lot more sense and gives the game a whole lot more depth and like a reason to grind. Before, all you really had was like high kill games and like how many wins you had, but now you had something kind of like actually show off. And we're kind of seeing that right now with Resurgence ranked on Fortune's Keep, which I think is even better. Ranked, another W. <laughs> Now this is something that should have been in Warzone from the start. PUBG did it first and it was awesome. Now Warzone 2 decided to add to the game and it also was awesome. This not only creates a ton of fun scenarios but also put trash talking at an all time high. Before we only had like the death chat which allowed for some but not all conversation. <laughs> now we have full-blown conversations in real time which is just spectacular the proximity chat compilations on youtube is just like endless amounts of content proximity chat is a w stims have absolutely no effect on movement or attack spread which is like super lame also didn't really help you heal in the storm whatsoever i mean it technically did but it was like very 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 little while we're talking about the gas let's go ahead and mention gas plays being absolutely nerfed to high hell aside from the stims not doing a damn thing buy stations got disabled like only two seconds after being the gas i'm not even joking it was something so stupid and on top of that the gas hit even harder than it did in warzone 1 i would love to know why they made this change because like gas plays are some of the most fun things you can do in warzone especially in the end game i think towards the end of warzone 2 they kind of like buffed it a little bit where stims actually helped you out a little bit but nothing like warzone 1 or warzone 3 overall huge L on this <laughs>
This was a really small feature that they kind of like slipped in an update that I thought actually had a huge impact on Resurgence in general. It was a genius idea that should have been in the game from the start. For those that don't know what Dynamic Resurgence is, it essentially scaled down the Resurgence timer to however big your squad size is, despite which mode you got queued in for. For example, if you're running solo quads, no fill, your Resurgence timer is going to be the same exact as if you were playing regular solos. Not only this, but loadout prices scale to the respected team size as well. We use that same solo quad, no fill again as an example, making a loadout only 7,500 versus 15,000, which is a huge quality of life change. I mean, think of the solo quads potential on Rebirth Island had this been around. It was doable, but once you died, it was over. This seriously could have been a game-changing experience in Warzone 1. Alright, so let's go ahead and factor in all these changes together, and for the good, we have maps, looting, ranked, nuke contract, dynamic resurgence, proximity chat. And for the bad, we have movement, gunplay, gas play, and stims. So you could argue that the good outweighs the bad, right? Well, honestly, probably not. Two of the three major cons are movement and gunplay, which I would argue are the two, like, core fundamental gameplay mechanics of Call of Duty in general. And if those two are lacking in the game, well, that's not exactly a good thing. Does that make Warzone 2 bad? Not exactly, but it definitely is my least favorite iteration of Warzone. Looking back at it, Warzone 2 honestly felt like playing an experimental server for an entire year. There were some great ideas here, but a lot weren't executed properly or took time to get right. However, of these ideas, a lot were evolved into what Warzone 3 is now today, and we wouldn't have had without Warzone 2. So although I don't miss Warzone 2, it definitely was an important chapter in the Warzone timeline. But that's all I have for you guys. Please let me know what you all thought about Warzone 2. I know there's just like a lot of opinions that I love to hear your alls. Be sure to subscribe and check out my live streams. They're right here on YouTube. Don't even have to go to another app. Hello. Oh my gosh! Join my Discord if you're feeling crazy too. And as always, if you liked, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. And thank you so much for watching.